From Bloomington, Indiana, Sports Channel presents NCAA Soccer. The Indiana University Hoosiers against the Huskies of Northern Illinois. We greet you from Bill Armstrong Stadium, home of the defending national champion Indiana Hoosiers. Under coach Jerry Yeagley, the Hoosiers have been college soccer's team of the 80s, winning three national championships in this decade. Tonight, they face a team that's developing rapidly and could cause more than its share of problems for the home folks. Hello and good evening, everybody. We're coming to you from Bill Armstrong Stadium in Bloomington. I'm Mike Lederman. Welcome to all our regular Sports Channel viewers and a special welcome tonight to the audience of WTTV in the Bloomington, Indianapolis area. Also, welcome to my partner, Kenny Stern. Ken, I tell you, if a team is looking to start a college soccer program and looking for the, the one, they don't have to look any further than uh, this outfit right here in Indiana. No, it's a tremendous setup here in Indiana from their fine $4 million facility to an outstanding uh, coaching staff to some of the finest players in America uh, representing uh, this program. Coach Yegi's done a terrific job. He's recruited uh, well in-state and recruited well out-of-state as evidenced by the fact that there are eight states represented here on his roster. Jerry Yeagley, 26 years at the same location. The only coach the Indiana Hoosier soccer team has ever had. Started on the club level, now working up to the varsity level since 1973. Never had a losing season. Of course, that doesn't make him totally satisfied what good coach would be. And even though Jerry Yeagley has a national championship again under his belt, well, he's not entirely happy with what he's seen on the field so far. Well, first of all, this is a new team trying to find an identity, trying to find uh, its own personality. There's six players missing from that championship game last year, six starters. Uh, we have some excellent returning players and some impact new players. Uh, the chemistry isn't there yet. The total co uh, coordination, uh, the communication, the understanding, these things that make teamwork are missing. Uh, at times they're there, and we do some great things. But this is probably the biggest problem, along with our midfield area. Uh, we graduated uh, some great players from there, and, and that was our biggest hole in terms of positions. Uh, we've had to move some people around. I think our freshman, Chad Deering, has done an outstanding job for us uh, in the midfield area. Steve Snow, as a freshman, uh, you know, a great player. And we've moved Kenny, Kenny Snow back into midfield a little bit. So uh, they're gonna, there's going to be a new wrinkle to this team this year, and, and I'm liking the, the way they're progressing, but uh, we're not there yet. Uh, we need to keep improving every game. Jerry Yeagley, among his honors, the most recent being elected to the U.S. Soccer Federation's Hall of Fame, along with his counterpart tonight, Willie Roy. Now, Willie Roy, as we know, has won a couple of championships with the North American Soccer League with the Chicago Sting. Since the Sting, he's gone on to Northern Illinois, and he's really done a job right there. Oh, he really has, and it's a young program and a building program, and I think anyone that uh, knows Willie Roy knows that he'll be able to take this program right up to the top level in N NCAA soccer, and it's, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, but this is, of course, a very important game for Coach Roy. Uh, as I have mentioned before, uh, Coach Jerry Yeagley has done a great job. He's come into the Chicago market. Uh, over the last 10, 15 years and taken the top players out of the Chicago market. But now uh, there's, a, there's a team to be reckoned with. And Willie Roy's team off to a fast start. Three wins in a tie in its first four games, doing very well. Willie Roy, of course, isn't satisfied. Yes, we need to improve in all areas uh, quite a bit yet. I, I think we have a little bit more composure, a little bit more maturity, and uh, uh, certainly uh, a coach likes, I, I like to see our defense tighten up a little bit, and then I like to see our offense get involved, our midfielders get involved a little bit more. And then again, uh, we had quite a few scoring opportunities that we didn't capitalize on. But overall, I think we're going in the right direction, and uh, certainly our team is, uh, uh, it's starting to be fun to watch our team. It's fun to watch Willie, too. These teams have played twice before, once in 1976, and last year, Indiana winning both times. But last year's game was surprisingly close, 2-1 to one for Indiana. They had a scuffle to get the win. They certainly did. After the game, you wouldn't know who the winners were and who the losers were. Indiana wasn't happy with their performance, and yet it was an outstanding confidence builder uh, for the young Northern Illinois University team. And it was uh, Chicago boy Kenny Snow that provided the key goal in that game, a uh, very fine free kick as the ball will curl right around the net and Marcus Roy, uh, then a freshman, now a sophomore, the outstanding goalkeeper for Northern Illinois, able to get his fingertips on that ball, but uh, unable to prevent it from going into the back of the net. Boy, Indiana was relieved to come away with the 2-1 result. 
Well, Snow scored the second goal as we take a look at the replay of the first again. Two to one, the final. Indiana coaches were screaming at the players after the game, really accusing them, and justifiably so, of looking ahead on the schedule. As for Northern Illinois, well, they may have a little more of a revenge motive on their, uh, on their faces as well because these two teams, we said, played twice. That's not exactly true. They played an indoor soccer game this past spring. You may have seen it on Sports Channel. Indiana came in and really wiped the floor with the Huskies by his count of 11 to 1. Then, with 20 seconds to go, called timeout, and that didn't sit well with the Huskies. No, that uh, certainly will never be appreciated. And although a uh, different sport, indoor soccer and outdoor soccer, uh, a lot of the players are the same, and it's going to be remembered. We will take a look at some of the players, get ready for the kickoff in just a minute. Right now, we'll take a break here on Sports Channel. Adolph 16, Kelly 5. Temperatures in the 60s, a strong threat of rain, but it has held off so far. You can see the records of both teams. Indiana scuffling, really. They started off the season with a loss and a tie and won its last two games out on the West Coast in the MetLife Tournament. Yes, some uh, fine results, and they play a very, very tough schedule. They play all the top teams in the country, so uh, certainly, certainly a very competitive uh, club, as they will always be. And as far as Northern Illinois is concerned, uh, the team has already had one more conference victory, one, than they had all last year. So things are going well for Willie Roy. Jerry Yeagley starting to feel that this team is coming together uh, after getting used to a few things early in the year and there is still more to deal with. We talked about some of the players. If recruiting is the name of the game, Jerry Yeagley has done it well, especially in the Chicago area with two players who may just be the two best players in the country. That's right, uh, Ken Snow and Steve Snow. Uh, from Schaumburg, and there you have a look at Ken Snow, first-team All-American the last two seasons, and Ken has already pr uh, proved himself to be a top college player. He won the Herman Award last year, uh, college soccer's equivalent to the Heisman Trophy. And there you have a look at uh, Steve Snow, and Steve, uh, outstanding, outstanding young player, uh, the top player in the country uh, last year as a high school player and a member of the United States national team. Well, you saw the term family feud up there in that graphic. We don't want you for a minute to get the impression that these two brothers don't get along. Well, I'm sure they have their scuffles, as any siblings do. The feud comes in with the players on the Northern Illinois team. When Willie recruits, he didn't have to look much further than the breakfast table. No, he didn't. There's uh, Willie Roy Jr., uh, first team all-conference selection uh, two years in a row and uh, probably going to make it three years in a row. He already has four goals. Karsten Roy, uh, perhaps the underrated member of the Roy family there. And Karsten, an outstanding midfielder who can really control the tempo of the game. And there you have a look at uh, just an outstanding young goalkeeper and Marcus Roy. And Marcus certainly will be uh, one of the keys to the game. Well, call it family feud, one man's family, or my three sons. Whatever you have, we'll have lots of things to talk about tonight. Quickly, Ken, some keys to this one from both teams' perspective. Well, I think uh, perhaps taking a look at uh, some of the real keys for the game, what each club is going to have to do uh, to win. For Northern Illinois, they're going to have to absorb the pressure. And as I mentioned, Marcus Roy is going to be the key. And uh, Marcus, uh, fine goalkeeper, he's going to have to come up with the big saves, and he's going to have to steady the defense. Uh, NIU is going to have to be active. Uh, one one uh, advantage, perhaps, where the Huskies uh, have it is a little bit more experience in the midfield. Coach Jerry Yeagley uh, lost his entire midfield to graduation last year, and uh, perhaps NIU can be active players uh, such as uh, Sparacino coming up from the back and uh, filling into the midfield. Also, 
NIU is going to have to finish their opportunities. Uh, Indiana won't give them that many, so they need to take advantage. Indiana University, uh, they're going to have to be aggressive. Coach Yagley has been a little bit disappointed uh, in the fact that they have been getting out fouled statistically by the opposition. And uh, he doesn't promote a dirty game, but he wants his team a little more aggressive. They're going to have to involve Steve Snow early. Steve has not scored a goal thus far in the first four games, and he may begin to get a little bit frustrated. Should he score early on, uh, the young man has, could really receive a confidence booster, and that can really go a long way for the success of Indiana. And they're going to have to play with intensity, uh, something perhaps they did not do last year against Northern Illinois University, but I'm sure you'll see it tonight. There's another part of that equation for Indiana, too. His name is Sean Shepard, who led the nation in assists a couple of years ago. Really an accomplished player, a blue chip player, a top drawer player. He's got to get involved along with the Snow Brothers for this team to really function. Oh, very true, and a good chemistry set up between uh, Ken Snow and, and as you mentioned, uh, and Steve Snow, the, the younger player and the new player has to now fit in. Coming up, we'll have the introductions and the start of the game right here. In just a minute, we'll take a break. Ah, dusk has fallen. The clouds are still heavy here. We anticipate some rain. The field can in beautiful shape, as one would expect from this facility. And we are just about set to get underway. We're talking about a team, Indiana, defending national champ, preseason number one, now ranked number seven, Northern Illinois, looking to break into some national notice. Let's go to our public address announcer, Chuck Crabb, for the starting lineup. For this evening's match. Just about set for the starting lineups. You saw the national rankings. We'll talk a bit more about them later. Mike, it's really turned into a beautiful night uh, for soccer. The clouds have uh, now parted, and uh, the sky is showing, and the air nice and cool, the way I'm sure all these young men uh, love it. Indiana's field, 75 yards wide, 120 yards long. Good size. It's the uh, collegiate size. And it's similar to what Northern Illinois has. You're taking a look at the Indiana bench. Northern Illinois has just built itself a new field as opposed to uh, playing its, for its games formally in the Husky football stadium. And that, uh, that field will do very well for the Huskies uh, when they go out to recruit the top players in the uh, Chicago area and in the, in the state of Illinois. All the fine players uh, would prefer to come and play on natural grass. And it's uh, one of the many advantages Coach Jerry Liegli has had here is this outstanding field and uh, this tremendous facility. A look at Willie Roy, coach the Sting in the North American Soccer League, both outdoor and indoor, played as college soccer at Illinois, later played, of course, for the Sting as well and played on the U.S. national team. And that earned him all those accolades and the spot in the U.S. Soccer Federation Hall of Fame. That man, Jerry Yeagley, he has made his mark as a coach, and boy, has he ever. Yes, as you mentioned, they've taken different routes to the United States Soccer uh, Federation Hall of Fame, but they each, uh, they each met there. Willie Roy, of course, is, a, is an outstanding player, former North American Soccer League Rookie of the Year, uh, former All-Star in the North American Soccer League, uh, fine professional career, and then uh, some outstanding seasons coaching in the professionals, and uh, Jerry Yeagley, uh, who has really made his name as a collegiate coach and uh, probably the top collegiate coach currently uh, in America. Nice crowd on hand. School is in session here at Indiana University in Bloomington. Student bodies here. Northern Illinois came down with lots of parents and some of the students as well made about a five-hour trip from DeKalb. We talked about the slow start of Indiana. They started out against number one Virginia, losing one to nothing, then following up with a tie against St. Louis. And there was concern over there because this was a team that was not supposed to start that slowly, especially offensively. 
Yes, yeah, so certainly with all the talent, uh, you would expect them uh, to get off to a little bit better start. But they brought in a top player in Stevie Snow. And anytime you bring in a top freshman player, uh, you're going to create a situation where uh, the chemistry is not necessarily going to be there immediately. And uh, it's taken a little while. There you have a look at the uh, Northern Illinois University captains, Jim Corno, Willie Roy Jr., and Tony Adolph as the uh, ceremonial flipping of the coin takes place. And we're just about ready for kickoff here. Indiana, Northern Illinois, we're here on Sports Channel and WTTV. I'm Mike Lederman along with Kenny Stern. Getting ready for this match and the introduction of the starting lineups. We had a momentary delay here, but I think things are just about straightened out. And we will talk about these fellows because both teams, in effect, Indiana is somewhat younger than Northern in a lot of, uh, in a lot of positions. Yes, but Indiana perhaps a little bit deeper. Uh, when they go out and they bring the players in, they're be being able to bring them in in bushel baskets where uh, Northern is able to go out and uh, now being able to recruit the players and bring the players, good players in one at a time. Indiana has uh, just a tremendous uh, tradition behind it, and they run some very fine uh, off-season camps that have been going on now for, for many years. Uh, and they start bringing the kids along at a very young age, and then eventually the kids become interested in the uh, Indiana University program, and they're able to uh, perhaps attack a little bit deeper on the bench, and it'll be interesting uh, as the game goes on to see if the Indiana bench uh, does have an advantage. Boy, when you take a look at all the Indiana Hoosiers who've gone on to the pro ranks, uh, we're familiar with some in Chicago, people like uh, Mark Simonton, Angelo DiBernardo, Robert Meshbach, Charlie Ficus. I mean, these are uh, all Indiana names. They could have probably stocked the NASL all by themselves at one point. That's right. And as you mentioned, those are Chicagoland players. And years ago, uh, uh, that's where the top players from the Chicago area were going. Uh, uh, there weren't the programs that uh, could compete uh, from a recruiting standpoint. And uh, not until recently have uh, some of the programs started to take off. And uh, not only Northern Illinois University, uh, there's some other fine programs in the Chicago area as well. Loyola, uh, DePaul, uh, now beginning to compete as well. Northwestern moving up. As far as conferences, Indiana, we know it is a Big Ten school, but for soccer, very much an independent. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Northern Illinois is Indiana in the Big Central. Now let's go to Chuck Crabb. And this evening's soccer match. The referee will be Mr. Ken Mather, the linesman, John Denkman, and R.K. Thompson, the alternate official at the scores bench, Tom Birch. And now we introduce the starting lineup for the Huskies from Northern Illinois University. In goal this evening, number one, Marcus Roy. Midfielder, tri-captain number two, Jim Corno. Forward, tri-captain number four, Willie Roy Jr. Midfielder, number six, Todd Moore. At a back position, number seven, Frank Sparacino. Mid at back position, number 10, Karsten Roy. At a back position, number 13, James Ehrlich. At a back position, Walid Fikri, number 15. Midfielder, tri-captain, number 16, Tony Adolphs. At forward, number 18, Per Eckholt. And at midfield, number 21, Dusty Showers. The head coach for the Huskies, Mr. Willie Roy. One note for Northern Illinois. And now for the James defending. James making his first start for the Huskies. He is a junior. Starting in goal this evening, number one, Jorgen Summer. At sweeper, number three, co-captain Jim Crockford. Midfielder, number four, Matt Isker. Midfielder, number five, Chad Deering. At forward, number six, Steve Snow. At a back position, number seven, Todd Stalter. At forward, co-captain, number eight, Sean Shepard. At forward, number nine, Ken Snow. 
At a back position, number 10, Kun Godat. Midfielder, number 12, Michael Lanhauser. And at a back position, number 16, John Paul. The head coach for the Hoosiers, Mr. Jerry Yegley. A look at both starting lineups. These teams will substitute time, rather liberally. And now we will uh, get set for the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. of course in the home jerseys in white and northern illinois to our left they will be on our left again the starting lineups and both teams have a lot of youth there you can see willie roy jr james ehrlich making his first start he will be at the sweeper back and there'll be a change jerry Frazinski will not uh, be starting tonight jimmy corno at the midfield along with the freshman todd moore Carsten Roy will play at the midfield. Frank Sparacino has got three goals in the last three games. Will be one of the fullbacks along with Wally Fickery. Dusty Showers, the freshman out of Libertyville, will be at the sweeper position. And Tony Adolfs, who had been at stopper, will go up uh, to the midfield. And the goalie, the goalkeeper, will be Marcus Roy, as he has been ever since he enrolled at Northern Illinois. Doing very well. You can see his goals against average, .69, and he's got two shutouts so far in the four games. And for the Indiana Hoosiers, again, lots of youth. Only one senior, Sean Shepard, he'll be up on the front line. Crockford, he's from Glenbrook North in Chicago. Matt Isger, who has been moved up to midfield from the back line. Another freshman, Chad Deering, will be in the midfield. Steve Snow up on the front line. Todd Stalter. We'll be back on defense. Sean Shepard, we told you, on the forward line along with Ken Snow. Ken Godat, probably the fastest man on the team, number 10. Michael Anhauser, number 12. John Paul. And there is Jurgen Sommer, a walk-on who has risen to MVP status. And we are underway here at Bill Armstrong Stadium. That is Steve Snow, number 6. Indiana in the white. And cleared out there by Northern Illinois. Tony Adolph's clearing. Back although, it goes to Indiana. Ken? Although Kenny Snow was announced as a forward, we've been led to believe that he will be pulled back into the midfield, at least here in the early going. And uh, perhaps one of the reasons we're seeing uh, Tony Adolph's being pushed into a defensive midfield position. Chad Deering trying to center across in front there to Anhauser, broken up by Northern Illinois. And John Paul, the stopper back coming up. Getting it, this is Steve Snow, number six. His brother Ken, Anhauser number 12. Quickly, Indiana on the attack. Cleared away by Showers, and we get a whistle. And it looks like it'll be a direct kick for uh, Indiana after the foul by Northern Illinois, and this will be a play similar to the one that Ken Snow scored on last year, Ken. Dangerous free kick from uh, about 26 yards out. You see NIU actually has a man in the goal covering uh, the near post. Steve Snow, Shepard. Now they're switching. And now he comes out and uh, goes back into the net, the defender. Kenny Snow to take it. And that one 
didn't find the top corner he was looking for. Some interesting uh, maneuvering going on. The uh, NIU defender uh, on the near post. Indiana very alertly put a man forward uh, because he would not be offside to try to create a little havoc. And just as Steve Snow ran onto the ball, uh, the uh, Husky player came charging off the line to try to pull the uh, Indiana player offside. But of course, the sh shot going high and uh, the ball coming over to the Huskies. Frank Sparacino on the throw in simple game, right? Willie Roy fouled from behind in there by Ken Godad who gave him a shove and Willie Roy is still there, still down. Get a clock stop for injury and Willie Roy is in some pain. He got a shot right in the back from Godat. I'm certain he just had the wind knocked out of him and uh, back up on his feet. Very tough young man. Uh, early on in the game, you'll often see the defenders uh, letting themselves be known. You see Godat, no intention whatsoever at going at the ball. And now Godat given the yellow card. And you wonder, Mike, did uh, Willie Roy Jr. got up right away? Would the yellow card have come? I don't think so. We'll see what happens now. Willie Roy Jr. doesn't look any of the worse for wear. He is the leading scorer on this team with 10 points already. And he's tied for the lead in the conference among conference teams in scoring. Looking for Steve Snow, and out of bounds it goes. It'll be a throw in once again for Northern. Frank Sparacino from Elk Grove, Illinois, will throw in. Looking for Todd Moore, the freshman, centering across, looking for Willie Roy Jr., but over the end line, over the goal line. Good ball there by Todd Moore. He turned and uh, hit it first time at the far side of the box, but uh, just a little bit too far for Willie Roy Jr., but nonetheless a good ball. Anytime you can tease the goalkeeper halfway off the line uh, without the keeper being able to reach it, uh, you've hit a good ball. Jurgen Sommer, the goalkeeper, walked on and became a starter. Sommer, six foot four, 210 pounds from Naples, Florida. His parents run a German delicatessen there, and he loves to go home and bring back lunch for everybody. Long kick up the field. We got a whistle, and we'll go back to Northern Illinois. Offside. Offside Indiana. call against Indiana on the booming the kick. Dusty Showers will get it back to Marcus Roy, and back it comes. Showers moved right into that starting lineup for Willie Roy, All-State player out of Libertyville, Illinois, and has done very well so far learning his position in college. Sparacino up there looking for Todd Moore, number six. Down the left wing looking for Moore, taken away by John Paul. Ball of veteran in the back, and we get a foul be committed by the freshman. Moore of Northern Illinois. Different look here for the Huskies as uh, Carson Roy is playing in the back. And we saw uh, last week a very fine game out of Karsten in the midfield, but uh, he has pulled back, uh, helping out more in the defense, although still playing in his midfield role. Again, the whistle, the uh, ball off Stalter. Northern will keep possession. Todd Stalter, the freshman. Actually, he's a sophomore, Richard, last year. Jimmy Cornell over on the right side, number two, has it taken away from him. Down comes Shepard. Looking on the left wing for Steve Snow. Snow has not scored yet this season, and he scored all kinds of goals in high school. Good run there by Snow on the outside. Uh, barely onside, the ball came. He tried to slide it through the middle, and Showers did a great job of uh, covering up the defense there and putting the ball out of danger. Go to it now as Indiana sets up. About five minutes gone in the first half. Two 45-minute halves. If there's a need for overtime, two 15-minute overtimes. That's a new rule in college this year. It used to be 10 minutes. Now you play 15. Action in the Northern Illinois end. The Huskies and the Hoosiers tied scoreless, broken up in there by Showers. And out it comes to Willie Roy Jr. And sent back just as quickly with Sparacino now trying to head it. And it looks like the foul will go against Karsten Roy, number 10, and Indiana will get possession. Danger. Actually, the dangerous play called there against Indiana. The Huskies with the ball. Moments earlier, Matt Isker, a very, very fine uh, move on the far side, some outstanding skill as he pulled the ball down with his chest. And 
and only a fine defensive play by Showers prevented a great goal scoring opportunity. Well, Roy called for a trip on Michael Anhauser, so now the ball will go over to Indiana. 38 minutes, 50 seconds to go. First half, scoreless here in Bloomington. Jimmy Corno battling for it. Indiana possession on the throw in. Indiana has had the better of things, certainly offensively, but Northern Illinois strategy is going to be to attack. They don't want to sit back and just play defense and hope Indiana doesn't score. They feel about uh, the only chance they would have here would be to be aggressive. One very good sign for uh, NIU is the fact that their defense, uh, although it's been uh, bent a little bit here in the early goings, uh, they've come forward with every play and stabilized very well in uh, front of goalkeeper Marcus Roy, and although Indiana's attack, they really haven't had the goal scoring opportunities. Fickery throwing it back to Marcus Roy. Wally Fickery from Peoria Richwoods High School. Starting this year, saw a significant time as a substitute back in 1988. At one time, Willie Roy started six freshmen last year. Very, very young team. Heading it in is Indiana. We get a whistle. And the foul going against Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois. This is Anheuser. Setting it up, looking for Steve So. He's tripped by Sparacino. And again, Indiana keeping up the pressure. 37-20 to go. Looking in there for Snow. Steve Snow. And Roy coming out to make the stop. Well, so far, Indiana has avoided one problem they've had, and that's Jurgen Sommer has been very busy in the first couple of games, in the first four games. He's had to make an unusually high number of saves for him, and uh, Jerry Egley was uh, telling us at the beginning of the evening that that was a concern, that the goalie has been too vulnerable. Of course, he said, lucky for Indiana, Sommer's been terrific. Action continues in the midfield. Karsten Roy tried to duel it out with a couple of the Indiana players. In front, Sparacino gets it out. Looking for Crockford. Crockford the sweeper back. Anhauser on the right side. Knocked away by the Huskies over the touchline. Throw in. This will be for Chad Deering. Deering, a freshman out of Richardson, Texas. Push in the back, and the official calls it against Ehrlich. Jim Ehrlich. And this will be a direct free kick for Indiana, and Deering will take it. Indiana with eight players pushed forward. Shepard heading into the box. Snow coming in from the left side. There's where Kenny Snow is most dangerous. Cleared out, this is Crockford. Crockford. Looking for Deering. Taken away by Per Echol. First time we've called his name tonight. Echol, striker from Norway. Has been a pleasant surprise for Willie Roy. Echol looking. This is Moore, the freshman. Broken up in there by Godat. Back it comes across the center line, and this is Dusty Showers. Looking up for Todd Moore. Again, Indiana in there to break it up. This is Northern Illinois' probably uh, greatest offensive penetration of the match so far, Ken. And they're still a good distance away. Yeah, certainly their best attack. Fine run by Eckhold moments earlier. And it was uh, the first time I actually could look down and saw Indiana's defense a little bit turned around. Had the ball gotten played a little bit quicker, the, Hus the uh, Huskies would have had a chance. Looking downfield, sent back by Showers of Northern Illinois in the black, Indiana in the home white. Cross it comes to Deering. Deering of Indiana gets it up now to Anhauser. Michael Anhauser looking for Matt Isger, and Isger gets fouled. Indiana will retain possession. 34, 25 left to go, first half. Still scoreless here in Bloomington. Northern Illinois foul. The lane has stayed away. The student body has come. Good crowd on hand beneath us. This is Sean Shepard. Shepard, number eight, being marked by Sparacino. Very dangerous man when Sean Shepard gets the ball moving. Marcus Roy across the goal line and has, has a few words in there. 
looks like uh, with Mr. Snow. He has to stop too. Check it with Sean Shepard, who was saying uh, the official, he, he's got to stop too, meaning the goalkeeper, if he doesn't want to be challenged. One interesting aspect of this game is uh, all three Roy's, along with the two Snows, uh, have been teammates. That's they right. played together in a very fine uh, program uh, with the Maroons Club out of Elmwood Park uh, for many years. In suburban Chicago. Yeah, these a lot of these players know each other. Between the high school experience and the camp, various camps and various touring teams. Here comes Indiana on the attack right now. This is Deering, the freshman maneuvering in. This is Steve Snow. Good save in there by Roy and cleared out by Sparacino. The best scoring chance right there for Steve Snow. Fine attack by Indiana and a tremendous save by Karsten Roy is, uh, excuse me, uh, Marcus Roy is, uh, he appeared to be beaten with a fine shot, but tremendous reactions on the part of the Husky goalkeeper prevented that ball from going in. The defense a little bit disoriented. Steve Snow certainly knows how to run off the ball. And uh, great opportunity right there for Steve to score his first goal of the season. Boy, it's probably the lowest, lowest uh, longest scoring drought Steve Snow has had. And he's looking for that number one. Here's Shepard. Indiana trying to maintain possession with Ken Snow, number nine. Ken's the junior, Steve is the freshman. Daring the other freshman. Todd Stalter now. And Karsten Roy intercepts. Karsten Roy, number 10, on a run. He's got Willie Roy, his brother, on the left wing. Willie Roy being marked by Godat. Willie Roy looking for brother Karsten. Setting up Sparacino. Sparacino, nifty move around Crockford. Shot on and easily handled by Summer. Frank Sparacino. Good sign for NIU, although the shot was uh, put at the goalkeeper Summers. Uh, First save of the evening for Jurgen Summer. It turned out the ball didn't have much on it, but it was a nifty move by Frank Sparacino. Well, it was a fine attack all around. Willie Roy Jr. in the corner, able to use his strength and hold the ball. And at the same time, he was watching to see what opened up. And as soon as the slightest opening occurred, that with his uh, brother Karsten, he put the ball through, and Karsten immediately knew what to do with it. Found the open man, Sparacino beat a man, and let go with the right-footed shot. And 31 minutes to go. Sorry, Ken, 31 minutes to go. First half, still scoreless. Indiana coming back now with Deering, who's showing excellent ball distribution right here. Anhauser, he's shown it all night. Michael Anhauser looking for Todd Stalter, number seven, over the end line. Now we get a goal kick for Northern Illinois. We talked about a couple of freshmen who uh, had to work their way into the lineup. Boy, Chad Deering certainly doesn't look like a freshman. He has wonderful, as they say, ball distribution skills, and we've been seeing that so far. Very, very poised. Coach Jerry Yeagley is very happy with uh, the young freshman there. He was, uh, as we mentioned, his concern was in the midfield. He lost his entire midfield to graduation, but uh, Deering has done very well here in the early going. Well, he made a couple of changes, too. He moved Matt Isger. Uh, Upperclassman, a junior up into the midfield. Now coming on a run is Deering again. Check it, uh, Stevie Snow, number six. Corner kick. Number eight. And this will be the first corner kick. The ball going over the goal line off Northern Illinois. So Sean Shepard will set it up. And this is where Shepard and Snow excel. He and Ken Snow worked it beautifully last year. Steve Snow in close. Stalter, and it's blocked away by Northern, by Karsten Roy, and this time it'll be a throw-in on the left wing for Indiana. Good effort there on the corner kick. Of course, the dangerous players are in the middle, and uh, often a player might be able to sneak up, and that time the Hoosiers tried to take advantage. Anhauser looking for Crockford in deep. Crockford coming up from his back position, and it looks like it'll be another corner kick for Indiana. The Hoosiers corner keeping the kick. pressure on. Yeah. 29 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Shepard again going to the corner. And we'll watch the setup here. You're looking at Willie Roy. There is Sean Shepard, fifth year senior. A little bit of confusion here. It appears that uh, the corner kick was not whistled. Well, they reversed the call, and that'll be a goal kick for uh, Northern. 
The referee dressed in orange, an unusual color, but of course, uh, NIU in their black uniforms, uh, the referee dressed in orange, came over and had a word with the linesman. Ken Mather, the referee, John Deckman, the uh, linesman, along with R.K. Thompson. Here is Frank Scarasino coming up from the left wing. Looking deep for Per Eckholt, but overshooting him. And Jurgen Sommer discusses a little strategy with his defense. Isker moved up from the back line to the midfield, and the... Uh, Youngster Todd Stalter moved back, and that has helped the team cohesively for Indiana. <laughs> Willie Roy has moved Tony Adolphs up from uh, the stopper position, from the sweeper position up to the midfield to try to bolster no, his no, no, midfield no, no, play. No. Clock now at 28 minutes. No score, an exciting first half. Here at Bloomington. Ken Godad, number 10. Brown Moore looking in the middle for Steve Snow. Snow looking. He's got Anhauser on the right side. Around Sparacino. Anhauser on the center. Headed away by Corno. Meanwhile, here comes Stalter again. Number seven kicked dead on by Deering and Marcus Roy right there. Uh, that was an outstanding attack right there by Indiana. Marcus coming up with the save once again. And a fine play there on the outside. As the ball was pulled down inside the box, it forced Jimmy Corno into decision-making uh, position. He couldn't go too aggressively at the player for fear of the penalty kick. And he saw the resulting center uh, ending up uh, with a fine no, shot no, by no. Snow. Direct, direct Moore and Crockford go down. Fouls on Moore. Crockford getting it out to Godat. And Ken Godat, youngster out of Christian Brothers in St. Louis area. In the starting lineup, Anhauser avoids Barasino's sliding tackle. And Michael Anhauser gets it out. This is John Paul coming up from the back position across midfield. Looking for Kenny Snow. Down to Steve Snow now. And back it comes Indiana again to regroup. Clock at 26.30. Go that. Willie Roy Jr. trying to put some defensive pressure on. And here come the Hoosiers again, John Paul. Shepard out of bounds. Off Stalter. No, it'll be off NIU. And it comes taken away by Wally Fickery of the Huskies. Trying to get it to Willie Roy Jr. Playing it back in the midfield. And once again, Indiana gets possession with Crockford. Getting it back to the keeper with Willie Roy Jr. close by. 25-50 left in the first half. Looking for Per Eckholt. And Eckholt of Northern has it taken away by Anhauser and back again to the keeper. We can tell immediately this match is a lot sharper than the one the two teams played here last year, Ken. Uh, we've seen some good soccer uh, here in the early going. Uh, I mentioned it's going to be important for NIU absorbing the pressure that Indiana is going to throw on them at times, and thus far they've been able to do it. Zanhauser looking to get around Sparacino, but Sparacino avoids touching the ball. It'll be a goal kick for Northern Illinois. You could see Mike Indiana gaining more and more confidence as uh, play is going on here in the first half, and some of their defenders. Uh, such as number seven, Todd Stalter, starting to join in the attack. Uh, Stalter making some very nice runs up the left side and holding outside uh, in a very disciplined fashion. And that's uh, been very successful as far as pulling the NIU defense apart and freeing up plate failures like uh, Stevie Snow. Yeah. Willie Roy Jr. has it taken away from him by Godat. Back it comes to Crockford. And once again, Indiana goes on the attack with the clock under 25 minutes now for the first half. It's interesting to watch Indiana, the tactics of the Hoosiers. Can't say that the, the Huskies aren't absorbing a lot of this too. You know, they're, they're playing, but they're learning at the same time. It appears they're uh, Indiana using the width of the field now. Uh, they want to do everything possible that they can do to pull the NIU defense apart in the middle and uh, to relieve the pressure with uh, Steve Snow. They need to make space in front of the NIU net, and that's where uh, their efforts are being focused. 
Ken Snow following Frank Sparacino. Indiana, Indiana foul. Foul. Direct kick for Northern Illinois. And with the clock at 24 minutes, Sparacino gets it in play. Karsten Roy drops it up the left side, looking for more. Karsten's got it again. Too far for more. Another thing I guess that a lot of American sports fans don't realize is the difference in the width, especially of the soccer field, the regulation soccer field. So many teams play on the football astroturf or the football field. In reality, it's a good 20 yards uh, shorter on either, on either side. And this way, on the regulation field, it opens the game up a lot. Coming down at Steve Snow. Fickery now takes it away for Northern. Up to Karsten Roy. Clock coming up to the 23-minute mark. Isger marking Roy, and Karsten Roy's got it back. Looking up, coming up for Moore, but taken away in there by Shepard. Back to Summer. That was a good opportunity right there. Moore held well here on the near side. Uh, he was on. Eckholt knew he was there. He took the pass from Karsten Roy, turned and tried to hit it with the outside of the right foot. Unfortunately for NIU, he did not strike the ball hard enough, and uh, the play dissolved. Todd Stalter trying to get it down, but Fickery is there for Northern. Clock now at 22 minutes, 30 seconds. Indiana ranked number seven. They started out preseason as number one. A tie and a loss, first two games, dropped them down significantly. The Hoosiers are on their way back with a big double weekend victory over in California against San Francisco and Stanford. John Paul now as Indiana sets up again. Over to Godat. Godat at midfield along with Stalter. Stalter coming down looking to left wing. Knocked away by the Northern defense. That's a fine pass here by Staller, changing the field of play. And Indiana will try it here from the near side. Anhauser. Michael Anhauser trying to work around Moore. Gets it to midfield. Karsten Roy tries to break it up. Sparacino defensively in the box. And Frank Sparacino beating Schapper to the ball. Knocked out by Northern Illinois. By Willie Roy Jr. It will be a throw in. Jerry Przinski for Northern. Northern. A Direction it's a throw in for Indiana. Getting ready to come in along with a freshman, Dean Capsalis, from Carmel, Indiana, for Indiana. This is Shepard, Sean Shepard, working around Sparacino. Sparacino trying to hang with him. He's getting some help. And we get the foul here. It'll be against Tony Adolphs of Northern. And so, once again, an opportunity for Indiana. I think uh, Sparacino's going to get the yellow card. Right here, we take a look. Northern Illinois, the more aggressive team with 11 fouls early in the early Yellow going. Card, Northern Illinois. Official felt Sparacino went a little bit too aggressive, unfortunately, uh, after that one. And Sparacino seeing the color yellow. Second yellow card of the night. And this is Shepard. Clock held up at an even 21 minutes. While the officials get the play set, Shepard, watch the snows breaking in, and it's headed away inside by Northern. By Karsten Roy, and here's Karsten Roy with Godat taking it away from him. Indiana putting on most of the pressure here in the first half. Stalter on left wing. Going down looking for Ken Snow. Ken Snow, both the snows are 5'8", but Steve is uh, about 20 pounds heavier than Ken. Here's Corno and Wally Fickery setting up for the free kick against them by Indiana. Chad Deering will take it. What? I know that. Up looking inside for Kent Snow breaking through, but it's knocked away by the Northern Illinois defense by Dusty Showers. Showers the freshman. Out of bounds off showers. Again, the throw in for Indiana. And again, back it comes to Ken Godat. Under 20 minutes to go first half. No score here. With Kenny Stern, I'm Mike Lederman, bringing you the action on Sports Channel and WTTV. 
on what turned out to be a gorgeous, comfortable night. And there's a foul by Kenny. Kenny has two foul. snow. Two snows, Direct four Roy's. A lot of folks here with the same name. There's three mics up here in the uh, in the box. But we don't count. <laughs> Frank Sparacino out of bounds. Last touch by Northern Illinois. And Indiana will continue to put the pressure on. Godad on the throw in. Looking for Schaffer. Taken away by Sparacino. Frank Sparacino is probably playing the best soccer of his young collegiate career for Willie Roy. He's won a lot of balls in the back. His responsibilities are a lot different than when we saw him last week, Mike. He was up and down the field against DePaul, uh, more supporting the attack, but here on the road, uh, he's called upon to stay back and help solidify the defense. But I think before the game's over, we'll see him make a few runs forward. One assist all of last year for Sparacino as a freshman. This year so far, three goals. They got him on the far side. Jim Corno making the run, but Karsten uh, Roy putting the ball behind him. Corno, the only senior on this team for Northern Illinois. Down it comes. Time. Toward the goal clock at 18.20. Sean Shepard now. Shepard around Sparacino, looking up for Michael Anhauser, who was sandwiched by Tony Adolphs and Sparacino. Shepard to throw. Looking for Ken Snow, and we get a flag right here. And it might have been for a dangerous play because the uh, foot almost came into Ken Snow's face. But it was simply called out of bounds. Godet getting a better spot to throw in. Looking in deep, tipped in closer by Northern Illinois. Back it comes, Ken Snow. Good discipline play there by Ehrlich. As uh, he easily could have got caught uh, chasing the ball, but he stayed with his man. And uh, NIU able to contain that play and start forward. But every young soccer player learns, first thing, it just takes years to drill into their head. Avoid the swarm. Play your man. Play your Northern lane. Foul. Direct Direct for remember those days in the stadium where they used to have the kids play during halftime oh, of the Sting yeah. games? They used to toss call a, it the swarm. Toss a ball out, and if there were 20 kids on the field, they'd all be uh, near the ball. But you see the level of play, yeah, even starting at the young age, is just gotten better and better over the last decade. And you're seeing the emphasis and the results of it in games such as this one tonight. Ken Snow now with the clock at 1640. Tipped away by Moore and Karsten, uh, Marcus Roy coming out. Take the ball before it went over the end line. Very alert play by Marcus. Uh, he didn't want to give up another corner kick. He knew it came off of his man and he was very quick to react and take command of the situation. Karsten Roy looking for older brother Willie Jr. And now at midfield we get a bit of a sandwich with Steve Snow right in the middle. And it comes, and this is Crockford. I believe NIU would like to get uh, Per Eckel a little bit more involved in the game. Uh, they need Per up there uh, winning a few balls and being able to hold on to it, take some of the pressure off the attack, and uh, therefore giving uh, some of the other midfield players the opportunity to come forward and help support the attack. 15.45 to go first half. We are still scoreless here in Bloomington. Going down with Steve Snow, no call. Chad Deering now trying to set up Ken Snow. Back to Deering. Taken away by Northern, by Corno. Lost again to Indiana. This is Ken Snow now, dangerous in the open field. Ken Snow on the run with Tony Adolphs, and the call will be throw it or a goal kick for Northern Illinois. Goal kick, kick Northern, Northern Illinois. Illinois. Now we get a couple of uh, substitutions. John Kelly, number five, coming in for Northern Illinois. Kelly, a sophomore out of Hanover number Park. And Dean Capsalis, the freshman number from Carmel, Indiana, will replace Matt Isger. 
Capsalis, another one of Jerry Yeagley's freshmen. He's got plenty, but uh, Capsalis has really played a lot in the first few games. Young man played on four state championships in high school, and his team won two of them. Can't do too much better than that. Good habit to get into. 14 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. At halftime, we'll be talking to both coaches, going over the first half highlights and giving you some insights into what's happening in college soccer. Action has been continuous, very fluid here in the first half. No goals, some good opportunities and some heady play right there. Stalter number seven has it taken away by Fickery. Wally Fickery, clock under 14 minutes. Fickery marked by Deering, looking to center to Willie Roy Jr. And Eckholt, Per Eckholt gets one over the crossbar, and Per Eckholt says, I'm John here. Good opportunity for NIU right there. Some uh, fine Go understanding on the part of uh, Eckholt and Willie Roy Jr. The ball came from uh, Jim Corno on the far side through the middle, and Eckholt uh, left it for Willie Roy and uh, as Willie touched it, Eckholt uh, was on the receiving end. Uh, as I said, some good understanding between the two players. They uh, worked as one there to create that opportunity. Willie Roy likes Pear Eckholt's ability to collect garbage around the goal. So far, there hasn't been much. Eckholt, the latest in the Norwegian connection for Roy, actually came in, heard about the program, and walked on. So Willie Roy feels that his program is mature to the point where he's not going to give somebody a scholarship sight unseen. He says, come over here. Let's see what you can do then. We'll all let you play. All he needs now is the garbage. Right. <laughs> you get a trip up in there, and uh, Steve Snow goes down. Foul on Northern. Don't know who was there. I think Northern it was Carson Northern. Northern. Direct we'll go against Carson Roy, and Sean Shepard will take the kick with 12 and a half minutes on the clock. We'll see. Steve Snow is uh, acting a little bit sneaky over there. He may run onto it very quickly and uh, strike it hard. The referee currently moving the wall back 10 yards. It looks uh, actually looks a little bit farther than 10 yards. But uh... Shepard lays it up to Snow, and Snow up and over. The shot for Indiana by number six. The deception is much a part of the play as the kick. And goals. those plays are worked on a great deal during the practice sessions. A lot of goals. Uh, during the outdoor game, of course, resulting off the dead ball situations. Steve Snow, considered by many the best high school player in the country last year. You're looking at the shots on goal. That really isn't a barometer of how the game has gone. Indiana has had much the better of things here in the first half. Northern, to its credit, has hung tough. Marcus Roy, having been called on to make a couple of, uh, two of those, at least two of those uh, shots on, were tough chances. Chad Deering. Mike, both Snow brothers, uh, very early bloomers. At a uh, uh, young age, uh, they were already, uh, people could see the tremendous uh, abilities and potential in both of these Illinois players. And Steve, in fact, a three-time uh, high school All-American. That's really phenomenal when you think of a sophomore in high school being one of the top players in the nation. And brother Kenny winning the Herman Trophy, which is the, as you mentioned, the equivalent of the Heisman for soccer as a sophomore. after leading the nation in scoring as a freshman. So he hasn't had a bad career so far. And Hauser puts on the brakes. Karsten Roy with him. Centering in front, we get a whistle. I don't think Indiana very pleased with the whistle blowing right there, although the official uh, going to pull out the yellow card after conferring with the linesman. But uh, Indiana had a nice attack going right there. The foul went against NIU and uh, referee of course called upon sometimes to make those instantaneous decisions elected to blow the whistle.